Red Viking Trucker Nation. Let's talk about truck driver safety for you newer and about to come in the business CDL 18 wheel big rig truck drivers. When you go to redvikingtrucker.com right now, you will find the very first post on the page dated September 24th, CDL 18 wheel trucker deaths and safety on the road. Just want to click on the read more and then open this up. When you open this up, first and foremost, we're going to talk about a couple of different scenarios that I've found in doing this research. And I, somebody reached out, quite a few subscribers reached out about the KLLM driver we're going to talk about first and said, hey, would you talk about the safety for us drivers, especially females out here? And that's what this video is based on. First and foremost, let's put the order of safety importance in play. You have to be safe first. Tractor trailer second and then the cargo last. I don't care what anybody tells you. If you're not safe, nothing else is safe. If the tractor trailer is not safe, the cargo is not safe. So this is in the order of importance for me. Um, number one, you're the captain of your ship. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. You don't move it. You don't do a thing. If you don't feel safe, you don't make a move. In these situations we're about to discuss, it's even more important. You also want to understand when you're dealing with any kind of threats of violence against you or your, your, your uh, person, you want to try and create distance. Distance is your friend, first and foremost. Um, and most company drivers don't carry any kind of a weapon like a like a, a, a pistol or a, a I'm just going to say pistol. We'll leave it at that. Uh, certain words key certain things on, on Google's or Google's algorithm and YouTube's algorithm. So I'm not going to say more than that. But you want to have some kind of pepper spray on you. Um, I've heard about bear spray being effective. Pepper spray, especially as close to police uh, endorsed pepper spray as you can get, is going to be more effective. Bear spray, maybe second wasp spray. I would say not at all, not even interested. And then if you're going to be out of the truck and you're going to be close by your truck, let's say that you're getting out of your truck to do a pre-trip at night or your uh, whatever you're doing on the lot, it's dark. I always carry my Sarast Fast tool. We gave one away the other night. You can click here. You can see what that is and order one. It's a multifaceted tool that you can use throughout your normal business of truck driving. And also it's a safety weapon because it gives you a good thumping tool for people. And there's also a list right here of the different pepper sprays I would recommend. Let's start first and foremost with this KLLM driver who was killed at the travel center last week in, in New Orleans. Um, she drove for KLLM. She was out of Mississippi. She had parked at the Mardi Gras truck stop in Elysian Fields. And the mother said that uh, the daughter had called her other sister, the, 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 other, the other daughter of the mother, and said that she had been pickpocketed. The driver said that. Well, it also says that she went out somewhere in the town and then had a Lyft or an Uber driver bring her back. And that's the last time that she was seen from uh, or seen of. Then the store manager, buddy, you come and check on her. I guess the truck was parked there for three days. And KLLM, one of the dispatchers, finally called the store and said, hey, would you do a, do a, a, a check on our driver outside? And they found her dead in her cab. So keep that in mind because there's a couple different things that, that go along with this story that I want to discuss at the very end of this. Okay, um, they had the chemically embalmer and wrap her in a pouch. Number one, it was still the middle, still summer, and she was in the, in the cab, and especially in the southern heat. It doesn't take long for the body fluids to uh, to expand, and all sorts of uh, nasty things happen in the body. Now, the other story that's on this. Let's go back. The other story, female girlfriend of a driver killed at Atlanta truck stop. OK, let's look at this story. This is where it starts getting kind of crazy when you start listening to some of these some of these stories. This one is really wacky. This is really wacky. Um, but again, it's a safety related issue. It's on Petro truck stop in Forest Park area of Atlanta, Georgia. Thirty one year old woman was found dead between the floor of the cabin and the trailer. Um, I guess the catwalk and. This is what's crazy is that the woman was a, she was a girlfriend of this guy here and they had come down from Pennsylvania and they had stopped for the night in Atlanta while he was asleep. His girlfriend got out of the truck to go do something. We'll leave something open to interpretation after you read this story. And she returned a man that he didn't know knocked on the door of the truck get him to get up to get her because said, you need to come get your girl out of my car. She's all messed up. And this guy Collier says, I didn't even know who she was or who he was, who the man was. He puts her in the truck. The boyfriend does. He said she was snoring. He watched her for a while and she fell back asleep. 
woke up this morning and she was gone. And he said, he said, he'll always wonder what happened, who his girlfriend was with and what went wrong. That doesn't ring true to me at all. That sounds like, it sounds like what it sounds like. Um, they're saying they don't, they don't expect foul play or don't, don't suspect foul play, but you don't know about that. Okay. Looking at some of the Google reviews, the place is horrible, shady looking neighborhood, dirty, nasty truck stop, charges 10 bucks to park if you don't fuel, you know, you can look at Google for some of those those reviews. But the thing that, that, that strikes me as odd is that in, you know, he had some other man bring her back to the, the truck and he wasn't concerned about that. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense unless you let it make sense. OK, a woman kills a driver at an Iowa truck stop. This happened back in 2017. She was just convicted in 2018. This is the original. This is the woman. She killed a driver. She was with the driver. She was in his cab. This is in his cab. And again, we're talking about some safety issues here at the end, but she was in his cab and she shot this 43 year old Mariana Lesnick. Sorry, it was the woman. She shot the 60 year old Ernest Coomer at the westbound IED rest stop in Victor, September 6, 2017. Um, he was working for Finley, a Minnesota based Copeland trucking company. And when you read the story about this on the actual conviction, he was in his truck. He didn't like being forced or being his, how he was forcing her to be his girlfriend. She put a pair of underwear over his head and, and shot him a couple of times, you know? So again, we're going to talk about some of the specific things, all of these different scenarios read. Now this last one, let's look at the last one. And I'm going to talk about each of these. A woman was raped by a long haul trucker. Okay. And this one, this, as this opens up, he's accused of uh, violating this Utah woman and violating because certain words pick the algorithm in. You can read what that says. Um, she had gotten in his truck that she had gotten in his truck to supposedly clean it. Okay. You get to the story right here met her at a Salt Lake City truck stop and, and she offered to clean his truck. He agreed to let her clean his truck. Again, certain things mean certain things. And they drove away to Kaysville, Utah to a rest area. Again, makes no sense to me. It makes perfect sense when you're thinking, talking about the street aspect of this. Makes no sense in the real world. Okay. And again, she agreed to, you know, service him as well, not just clean his. And then he didn't like that she was, uh, not letting him do what he wanted to do. So he apparently, you know, forced himself on or pulled a weapon out. Now in this, in this, look at this, in this whole story, he was also in possession of a stolen Beretta 92 FS nine millimeter. And they used the GPS to confirm the place and the locations that she claimed that uh, corroborated the story. And they also found a quarter pound of some Mary Jane. Okay. Again, certain things mean certain things. Here's what I would tell you. Well, so let's talk about one more. This was an accidental, completely accidental, but this is important to understand out here how big these, these pieces of equipment are. Okay. Let me open this up here. This was, this was sent to me from a, a subscriber from Jeff. This uh, death of a 69 year old man at a Nashville Averett Express truck lot. He was caught between the two trucks. The parking brake wasn't set. It rolled back and it smashed him. Okay. So let's talk about a couple things on all these scenarios. Okay. First and foremost, keys to avoiding violence and even death while being parked at any locations as a CDL 18 wheel big rig truck driver. Your situational awareness of your surroundings is paramount. You have to understand when you get out of your truck, you're the least safe of any situation. When you're in your truck, you at least have some security and maybe have some other weapons in the truck. You want to keep out of cab activities minimal in a new or foreign or sketchy area. If you got to get out of your cab, you can look over YouTube millions of videos and you can see uh, different store cameras showing how fast things can happen. Things happen in seconds. It doesn't take minutes for, for events to unfold. So I would tell you, you want to, especially women coming out here, especially at night, when you're at a truck stop, your out of cab activities need to be kept to a minimum. You want to have the curtains pulled so nobody knows who's inside. If you're getting inside and someone sees you getting inside the tractor trailer and you close the curtains and you hear a knock at your window, 
you unless it's a police officer and you see blue lights, you don't open that that window for anything. You don't open that curtain for anything. Never allow a stranger in your truck or near you more than a reasonable social distance. What do I mean by a social distance? I mean, if somebody gets inside of your your space, it's about two to three feet in your personal space. You need to remember that you need to back them up or back yourself up. You never want to back yourself up towards a field or towards a uh, wooded area, like between your truck, you're working your way back towards the back of the truck, backing yourself up. You want to get back in the middle of the lot. You want to get back where people can see you, whatever you got to do. And you want to focus on having some kind of protection and you want to focus on the distance from the attacker. You want to keep that person or that potential attacker as far away from you as you can. Let me also tell you, this Saras Fast tool, the pepper spray, all that stuff, if you, if you carry a weapon, once you realize somebody wants to do you harm, you need to, people are too polite. People are too polite. You need to go crazy early. If someone gets hands on you or they start to reach for you and you try to just politely push them away rather than going crazy early, and I've got two daughters and I've told them, I've told them both and trained them both, you go crazy early. You don't ever give somebody the second chance to, to continue to, to mess with you. You don't ever get in their car. You don't ever let them in your car. And if they're trying to get in your car, you get out of your car if you, if you have to. And you let them take the car and you don't fight to try and stay in the car at all. At any, any reason. Any reason. Polite people die because of misplaced trust. Polite people die because of misplaced trust. You think that the world is shiny and smiley and, and peppermint and mint juleps? It's not. There are people out there walking around that are evil that want to do you harm. And you need to understand they're at truck stops too, especially at truck stops sometimes because truckers, you know, tend to be a little bit easier targets. They have money. They have, I had, I saw a crazy thing this past week. I was in a state that has uh, medical Mary Jane and there was a trucker in the, in the, uh, in the lounge. Uh, sending out his Mary Jane to different people across the U.S., sitting right there, chopping it up and putting it in, in uh, FedEx packages to send it out, you know, and he was doing it right in broad daylight. Didn't matter to anybody. He didn't care. He's like, well, I'm in a state where it's legal. doesn't matter. You want to re remember that people have a different impression. Everybody that you come in contact with has a different impression about what's normal, what's reasonable, what's acceptable, a lot different than you. I'm very cautious about letting people get in my personal space. I'm very cautious about only anybody in my truck unless I have any kind of semblance of knowledge of who they are. And I don't, I don't get in their truck, vice versa. And if I get any kind of bad vibe from people, you know, I don't, I don't encourage anybody to try to handle things on your own unless you have no choice but to handle things on your own. I tell you to get away from the situation, get back in your truck, get the doors locked. You know, and, and if you need to call 911, then do that someplace. Once you're safe, once you're out of harm's way or you go inside the travel center where you're in the middle of the lot, you start screaming, you start fighting for your life. You don't ever, 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 ever uh, stay polite. You, you handle every encounter that goes bad like that. You handle it like it's a life or death situation. You want to be gouging at their eyes or throat. You want to bite and you want to kick them in the groin and you want to go crazy early. You, you're going to you're going to you're going to completely have to stop being polite and friendly because they want to do you harm and you want to scream nonstop during the attack. Let me explain to you what I mean there. If you watch these videos where the police are, you know, trying to subdue somebody, they're all yelling. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. You know why they're doing that? Because they've been trained that most times in a physical confrontation, people hold their breath. When you do that, lactic acid builds up. You get worn out quicker. You have to learn how to breathe. You need to be screaming nonstop if you're being attacked, number one. And number two, like this first girl back here to this, this Mississippi girl, you know, you go downtown someplace that maybe you've been to before, but now you're going down there by yourself. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend you go any place out of the area by yourself. Even though we travel by ourselves, you got to be super cautious going downtown by yourself. Now, she looks like she's a little bit bigger girl, but, you know, again, who knows what happened to her? I would just tell you, I don't, you know, uh, catching an Uber somewhere and going downtown to a, to a different town, especially the Mardi Gras area of New Orleans, that is a that is a little bit off the chain type of place. OK, if you've never been down there, it's uh, it's wide open during Mardi Gras. And it's wide open most of the year. You need to be very cautious. 
a lot of uh, a lot of situations you can get in trouble. So these are my things: situational awareness, keep your out of cab activities to a minimum, never allow a stranger in your truck or get near them or get near their truck or get within reasonable social distance. If they start trying to break that social distance, you need to be very firm with your dialogue. You have some kind of protection: the pepper spray, the bear spray, the the Sarast fast tool. Distance is the key. Distance is the key. And for you smaller folks, you want to go crazy early. You don't, you, polite people die. Okay. Polite people die. You want to go crazy early. You're gouging at the eyes, the throat, you're biting them, you're kicking them in the groin, and you're screaming nonstop and getting out in the middle of the lot, if you can, getting out in some place more public than in, in between the tractor trailer. If you got to drop to your knees and crawl under the tractor trailer and go to the other side and run out the other way and be yelling, you got to do that. This, these, these scenarios, let's talk about these scenarios now. Okay. The long haul trucker that had Mary Jane in his truck and had a, had a weapon. You're going to bump into those people out here. They're all around you. You just don't know it. You just don't know. It. You don't know that they're, that they're, you know, carrying illegally and that they're still doing, you know, some illicit things. You don't know that. This woman that killed the driver at the Iowa truck stop, you know, she was in his cab. Well, she was in his cab and he was sleeping. So he must have felt comfortable around her, but he was obviously being whatever he was being towards her. She looked like she was a, a smaller woman, you know, and she had a weapon with her and she took him out. Again, whoever's in your cab, you got to trust if you're sleeping, you got to trust them. This female girlfriend of the driver that was killed in Atlanta it doesn't make any sense at all unless she was servicing other men. It makes no sense at all that this guy, some other man brought her back to the truck and he didn't find that odd. Makes no sense at all. The female KLLM driver going downtown by yourself, getting the Uber back. Who knows who she met or who brought, who, who knew where she was and came to meet her. And uh, who knows? Who knows? I'm just telling you, people don't. Because in this situation, if you read the other stories, her cab was locked from the inside. But she had there was there was blood and there was signs of a struggle in the cab. So somebody did something. Now, again, are there cameras on the lot? At most of the big travel centers, there are outside cameras all over the lot which works to your favor, um, unless you're in a certain travel center in Albuquerque. But anyway, back to this. And you're going to have some protection from those cameras, but you need to remember your cab sometimes is the safest place you can be. It's the safest place you can be. And you want to keep your out-of-cab activities in new or strange or sketchy areas to a minimum. So that's my take on this this whole situation with these these things. And the guy, the old, the old older gentleman that uh, got caught between the tractor trailer, you know, these are big old, these are big old vehicles. These are big old massive vehicles. And we need to all remember that when they're moving, we have a chance of being injured. And you just got to pay attention. You got to slow yourself down and pay attention. That's what this video has been about, about CDL 18 wheel big rig trucker safety and security for yourself, your tractor trailer and your cargo in that order, first and foremost, and situational awareness and going crazy early and having some kind of self-defense tool. I don't recommend the knife so much, especially for the smaller people, because a knife is a close quarters combat thing. You want something that's going to give you space. That's a RAS fast tool. I think including shipping is like $44. I don't, I'm going to get paid a penny for telling you guys that. That's about a two and a half, three foot long piece of pig iron. And that'll lay a whooping on somebody. And you want to hit him in the kneecap. You want to, you want to incapacitate their ability to walk or run. You want to shoot for the head if you can, as far as swinging at them. But even on that, if you if you miss and they catch it, versus swinging for their legs or their ankles or their their kneecaps, it's going to do just as much damage. But remember, your safety first, the tractor trailer second, the cargo third. Go crazy early, and be super conscious of your surroundings out here. Super conscious. We're the ones traveling to different cities, and the moment you drop your guard is the moment stupid stuff happens. Wanted to share that with you. Appreciate you guys watching. Please put your comments, your situations that you've survived, gone through, whatever you've done to tell other people about things you've done. Put it in the comments when the video's over. Red Viking Trucker is out.